This is Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. Welcome to Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. I'm Sadie from Nashville, Tennessee. I'm seven years old and I'm interviewing Ruth Reichel, who was the narrator of last week's episode of Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. If you haven't heard last week's episode, now is a good time to go back and check it out. Ruth, would you like to introduce yourself? I am Ruth Reichel, and um, I was very lucky because I started writing about food when almost nobody else was writing about food. So I was someone who had no money, but I became a restaurant critic and got to learn on the job, which was um, just an amazing privilege. And I sort of worked my way up. I became first the restaurant critic of the Los Angeles Times and then the restaurant critic of the New York Times. And then um, I was asked to become the editor-in-chief of Gourmet Magazine, which was the first Epicurean magazine in America. And um, along the way, I got to write a number of books. And along the way, I also got to know Julia Child quite well. Julia Child credits Paul Child for her success. How has your marriage strengthened your career? Julia and Paul had... One of the most remarkable marriages that I have ever known. And one of the things that was so amazing, in many ways, Paul made Julia into the person that she was. She learned to cook because she wanted to please him and then found her passion through that. But what happened was that the power in their relationship changed dramatically, uh, going from him being the dominant person to her career taking off. And for someone of his time to be so supportive of her, he was proud of her. He supported her all along the way. He was happy to play second fiddle to her. I mean, as she became more and more famous, he became the person who was her assistant, who helped her do, I mean, he gave up his career to help her do hers. I also have had an enormously supportive husband. I married a man who thought that I had a real talent and kept insisting that I follow my talent. And, you know, I was at the L.A. Times, and when the New York Times came, Michael had a very good job here in Los Angeles, but he was the one who said to me, no, 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 the New York Times, it's the best paper in the country, maybe the world, and this is an opportunity, and you go do that, and it's important for you to do that, and I will follow you to New York. It is a piece of extraordinary luck if you're a woman to have a man who recognizes your talent and is willing to help you become the best person that you can be. How did you become a better writer? Two ways. One is, I honestly believe that I learned to become a writer at the dinner table. In the household I grew up in, you were expected to come to dinner with a story to tell. What I learned from that was, one, that something interesting happens to everyone every day. And the story could be just, you know, you met someone on the bus and had a conversation. So I started thinking about what is interesting. And then I also started thinking about how do you tell this story so it's the most interesting that it can possibly be. So I learned what a lead is. I mean, how do you start the story so it's interesting to people? I want to say that because I think that spending time at a table is very important and that you can learn to be a writer literally at the table. The other way that I became a better writer was I just read a lot. I read all kinds of different voices, and I read as much as I could, as often as I could, and thought, you know, how did this person put this story together, and how would I have done it differently? And then a third thing is when I decided that I really wanted to write specifically about food, I started telling myself every time I ate something, I would try and describe it. And the thing is that in the English language, we have very few words for flavor. So you can't just say something is delicious because that doesn't convey to people what it tastes like. 
And so I would find myself using words about color, about sound, about the way something made you feel to convey what flavor was. And for a long time, every time I ate something, I would try and describe it in words just to myself. What would your last meal be? I have to tell you that my last meal varies from day to day, depending on what I feel like eating that. I mean, the world is so filled with fantastic food. It's really hard to choose just one meal. I, I admire the fact that Julia was able to say with such certainty, but I will tell you what my last meal today would be. Today, it would start with some wonderful West Coast oysters and some sea urchin, which I think is the most delicious flavor on the face of the earth. Then I would want a really beautiful salad just been picked with some perfect tomatoes in it and just a very simple dressing of olive oil and very good vinegar. And then I would want a perfectly roasted chicken with really crisp skin and moist inside with sautéed potatoes and on the side some very fat, perfect spears of asparagus with some butter on it and maybe a little bit of balsamic vinegar. And for dessert, I would want one perfect peach. Thanks, Ruth. If you like the show, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen and share it with all of your friends. Stay Rebel!